On June 21st, 1947, Harold Dahl and his son Charles were gathering logs near the eastern shore of Maury Island, Washington in Puget Sound, when Harold suddenly saw something strange in the sky above him. What looked like six donut-shaped objects were suddenly hovering roughly half a mile above his boat, but before Dahl could even attempt to understand what he was looking at, a barrage of metal debris rained down on him. What seemed like liquid metal struck Charles, while Harold managed to snap a few photographs of these strange flying machines. When they got back on land, Harold immediately showed the photographs to his supervisor, Fred Chrisman. Initially skeptical, Chrisman then decided to check out the scene for himself, and actually saw one of the strange flying objects hovering right there before his very eyes. The men were flabbergasted by what they had just witnessed, but the story was just getting started. And what happened next may remain the most chilling part. The next day, Harold Dahl claimed that he was visited by a mysterious man in a black suit who was able to describe his experience in eerily accurate detail. The man then told him, What I have said is proof to you that I know a great deal more about this experience of yours than you will want to believe. Before he left, the man gave Dahl a warning. Say nothing of the incident or bad things would happen. Harold Dahl's story went largely unheard for years, until the publication of Gray Barker's book, They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucers, in 1956. The first book to focus on a mysterious organization known as the Men in Black. But just who are the Men in Black? While the 1997 Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones film might paint the Men in Black as, quote, galaxy defenders who stop extraterrestrial threats against Earth, those who claim to have encountered the Men in Black in real life describe them in a much more disturbing way. Some have described the Men in Black as pale-skinned, tall men who appear in groups of two or three to silence witnesses who have seen extraterrestrial phenomena. Some accounts describe the Men in Black as nothing more than human men in dark suits, but others describe them as something other than human, even alleging that the Men in Black could communicate telepathically and levitate above the ground. These varying accounts have led some people to believe that the Men in Black are government agents, while others claim they may in fact be shape-shifting aliens in disguise. In either case, a knock at the door from the Men in Black is sure to send shivers up the spine. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Austin Harvey. And I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Clay Nafraga. And today we're talking about the mysterious organization known as the Men in Black, as well as some of the recent UFO sightings that have made headlines around the world. I've never seen the movie Men in Black, but I should say that right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> That's just unfortunate. I know. There's three of them. There's three? Oh, There's too three many of them. That's too I don't many. remember the third one or the second one, but the first one's fun. As Will Smith always did back then, he wrote the theme song for it. Yeah, you mentioned that in the last episode, and I thought, I, I couldn't tell if you had misspoke or something, but no, yeah, he no. did? Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, wow. It's an, it's, you can listen to it at any point. It's, yeah, the Men in Black. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. That's Here awesome. Come the Men in Black. It's like super funky. That's the theme song? Yeah. Wow. I mean, he raps. He raps in it. Yeah. I, I just have a totally different conception of what this movie... Is it like sort of... Uh, it's a comedy. It is? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was kind of like dark and <laughs> atmospheric. No. <laughs> no it's, a, it's a very funny movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> so check it out. <laughs> My one friend has this theory that the reason they made the Men in Black movie was to like make it make the organization seem goofy so that oh. people would believe in it less. Oh, that's a whole that's a different podcast. <laughs> the good guys dress in black. Remember that just in case we have a face to face and make contact. The title held by me. Let's get into what it what the Men in Black even are. Yeah. Um. So the first mention of the Men in Black came in a book by writer Gray Barker called They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucers. 
Hmm. In the book, Gray Barker interviewed multiple people who claimed to have had paranormal encounters, um, mostly with UFOs, and what their experience was like, both as a witness of this paranormal encounter and afterward. Um, one of the most prominent ones in that was the story of Harold Dahl, who was out collecting logs with his son when he said he saw a donut shaped craft in the sky hmm. hovering above them that then dropped pieces of hot metal, like oh. hot liquid metal all over the ground before they flew away. Oh, seems like he would get some evidence then. You'd think. Um, he snapped some <laughs> photos. <laughs> he took a couple photographs. And show them to his supervisor, his supervisor, a man named uh, Fred Chrisman. Mm -hmm. Chrisman then went to investigate the site where Dahl claimed to have seen these craft himself. And Chrisman also said he saw them. Oh. Now, this is all being relayed to Gray Barker via Harold Dahl. So okay. take that for what you will. Hmm. Dahl then said that the next day he was mis he was visited by a mysterious man in a black suit who warned him not to speak of what he saw. Or he might suffer dire consequences. Oh, creepy. He said to the man, what I have said is proof to you that I know a great deal more about this experience of yours than you will want to believe. Hmm. He basically like came up to Harold Dahl and said, yesterday, did you see these craft in the sky that did this? And like in scary, accurate detail. Yeah. And Harold Dahl was like, yeah. And the guy was like, don't tell anybody about it. So then Dahl went and told Gray Barker about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, the okay. book did come out a few years after the incident when um, I believe the Maury Island UFO incident, which was the one that Harold Dahl claimed to have witnessed, actually happened around the same time as one you mentioned in our first episode about the pilot who claimed to have seen oh, stuff. Keith, Keith Arnold in 1947. Yes. Yeah, Wait, so are the Maury Islands, aren't they in... Oh, yeah, because they're also in Washington State, and that's where the sighting was. Right. Keith right. Arnold's sighting, yeah. So, oh, yeah, that happened around the same time. Interesting, um, okay. Harold Dahl's experience at the Maury, the Maury Island UFO incident took place June 1947. So this is oh. before UFOs were, like, well, big. Well, June 1947 was when Keith Arnold saw it. Exactly, yes. yeah. Yes, okay, wow. Mm, yeah, so those two events actually line up Very well. surprisingly well. The book yes. didn't come out until 1956. Okay. So it was nine years later that he was speaking with Gray Barker about this. Mm -hmm. um, there was a second story in there about a guy named Albert K. Bender, who was a UFO fanatic. He had an organization called the International Flying Saucer Bureau. He published a magazine called Space Review. In a 1953 edition of Space Review, Bender wrote that he had been visited by three men wearing dark suits who told him to stop publishing information about UFOs. Hmm. That same year, he disbanded the International Flying Saucer Bureau and stopped publishing Space Review. Oh, interesting. But then he told yeah. people that he'd been... Interesting. Because it could right. be like, you know, he had other reasons and was like, I oh, by the way, these men visited me and told me. I don't know. Right. Interesting. Okay. Uh, to be clear, the magazine was not making money. Oh, you're, you don't say. <laughs> and he was probably losing money by printing it. Mm. Um, so it is entirely possible that he claimed, made this claim about the men in black as a way to like drum up interest yeah. before he stopped publishing it. Sympathy. Yeah. Which kind of comes back into play because a few years later he released his own book about oh. the men in black. Mm. But in his interview with Gray Barker, uh, Bender described the men in black as, quote, three men in black suits with threatening expressions on their faces Three men who walk in on you and make certain demands. Three men who know that you know what the saucers really are. Hmm. Interesting. Three men, not just one man. Yeah, three men this time. Hmm. And all of this sort of sounds at least relatively plausible. The idea that if you were to witness something, a government agent would come to your door and be like, hey, shut up about that. I don't think that's entirely far fetched. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they were really, like, that threatened, though. Well. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the dire consequences, I don't know what those were, but I don't know. Right, seem... well, it, it sort of takes on the Men in Black, like, lore mm -hmm. really expanded when Albert Bender released his book because they start to take on this, they start to seem a lot less human. 
oh. in the way he describes them in his book. So in 1962, he released a book called Flying Saucers and the Three Men. In that book, he wrote, They floated about a foot off the floor. They looked like clergymen, but wore hats similar to Homburg style. The faces were not clearly discernible, for the hats partly hid and shaded them. The eyes of all three figures suddenly lit up like flashlight bulbs. They seemed to burn into my very soul as the pains above my eyes became almost unbearable. Hmm. So it so no longer feels like we're talking about government government agents showing up. Aliens who work for the government. The, so that is one theory <laughs> surrounding <Okay. laughs> the men in black. Um, uh, and I, act I actually don't have this in my notes, but I know of the story. So there was rumors of a government program to keep this man in the White House who may have been from another planet. Wait, a man in the White House who was not the president? Like who was not a person? the president. Okay, got like, it. like, yeah. Um, he was allegedly living in the White House. Uh, I forget the name they used for him. I think it was Valkyrie or something like that. Okay. It was like the, like the name on official reports. Some people have suggested that this Valkyrie might have been Someone named Indrid Cold. Okay. Who <laughs> is an oddly human looking alien in a dark suit that had interacted with multiple people around the Jersey area mm -hmm. and just said he wanted to learn more about humanity. Um, he was about seven feet tall and had six fingers on each hand and could oh. speak telepathically. Stand out in a crowd. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm I obviously I, I'm not getting the full story here, but I know there is some connection amongst some conspiracy theory circles that Indrid Cold may have been picked, may have been an alien who crash landed on Earth to learn more about humanity and was curious. Um, I know one story about him involves him just being in a little girl's bedroom in the middle of the night. Oh, it's creepy. <laughs> just observing her. Some people have alleged that the government may have picked him up and that. Dwight Eisenhower was friends with him and leaned on him as like a they they basically said his IQ was like 7000 like just oh inhumanly like disproportionately smart and so he might have advised the Eisenhower presidency about just everything about just everything and Dwight Eisenhower's granddaughter Laura Eisenhower has since claimed that her grandfather was friends with aliens what other people claim that Eisenhower signed a deal with aliens to allow them to abduct humans in exchange for like crucial information. Mm -hmm. Nixon reportedly was clued into alien stuff and was friends with oh, he was friends with some actor, some big old Hollywood actor. Nixon was Nixon was oh. and allegedly they, they were golfing together at one point and he took this Hollywood actor and showed him. Like a spacecraft. Did the aliens only talk to Republican presidents then? Evidently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, as someone, you're more interested in presidential history than I am. There's like a lot of yeah. weird overlap with like presidents and aliens. Oh, that's so interesting. I don't know very much about it at all, but yeah. I that's I, fascinating. Yeah. That, so that's just a little side tangent there <laughs> um, that I thought I'd bring up. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the only other thing I really have to say about the men in black thing, other than the fact that they're they're either human or not human and the, the, the debate is up and it's sort of evolved into, into its own like mythos. Mm. Um, Gray Barker, the author who wrote about them initially, was not a conspiracy theorist like that wasn't what he was known for. He described himself as an entertainer, but he was a folklorist mm -hmm. by trade, if you will. He wrote a lot about folklore. And so a lot of people considered this idea of the men in black and flying saucers at the time to be a sort of evolution of folklore for the modern era. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I could see that. Carl Jung in 1957 wrote a report called Flying Saucers, a modern myth of things seen in the skies. Do you know what that was about? Nope. Okay. <laughs> no, I, all I know is that um, he just kind of spoke. Jung particularly wrote about the phenomenon of ufos in like the late 40s and 50s 
yeah. uh, as a, like a resurgence of folklore based on fears of the future and fears of technology and space. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see that given, you know, after World War II ends with the atomic bomb, go right into the Cold War, suddenly there's fear about, yeah, spying right. and space and technology and space race and science fiction. Right. I can, I can see that for sure. Yeah. I think it's a very interesting take on it. If even for like more skeptical people to look at that as like a, in the same way that we look at fairy tales. Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking, you know, in college, I, I had one class that was about, it was about, I guess it was about like Soviet history but like in the 20th century and one thing i i researched was like soviet science fiction versus american science fiction and they're really oh, different i can imagine yeah american science fiction is in the um during the cold war was more like everyone at one point is gonna get along and we're all gonna be equal and soviet science fiction was more like everyone shall like report to moscow to be the center of the universe you know and yeah some uh, interesting differences huh. in their their two visions of the future but i i uh, I think at this time when a lot of these things are happening, not so much the 90s, which is where we've been the last couple of episodes, but right. definitely in the 50s. Yeah, this what the future is going to be like, the technology around it, space was so big at that time. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why a lot of like science fiction still leans on that like 50s aesthetic as well. Mm -hmm. That like, like the, you know, the old diner paintings and pinups and things like that. It's very popular in science fiction. Mm, sure. So, yeah, I, I yeah, I think the men in black thing is very interesting. I don't know if I believe it um, only if only for the fact that they they don't make regular enough appearances in these stories. I mean, if they're doing their job right, you wouldn't hear about them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the, right. That's the argument. But like, <laughs> like, but like the like, look at the like the Kelly Hopkins villain incident where the we know that story. The family came forward and told that story. They never once mentioned mm -hmm. being visited by men in black suits. Yeah, I think the story is not. It's like it's sort of believable until Bender comes out and talks to them floating <laughs> off the floor. And then you're like, what? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Like I said, unless you start to dive really, really deep into some of this UFO lore stuff with like injured cold. Um, we mentioned Project Blue Book before, but that was like a huge, huge, huge thing mm -hmm. that we could probably do another series on Project Blue Book entirely because of what they were and what they yeah. did. But all of these things whether you know whether true or not find weird connections between all of them even like the men in black indrid cold and dwight eisenhower which like seemingly have nothing to do with each other connections have been made by people throughout history again not saying that that necessarily validates them but it it yeah shows that these things have sort of taken on a life of their own as a story i'm pretty sure jimmy carter said he saw ufos oh yes he did Apparently, he was convinced he saw a UFO in 1969. Just everywhere, it popped into my mind talking about Eisenhower and well, yeah. presidents and aliens. That's so interesting. <sighs> I think it's so interesting to me that um, Laura Eisenhower is saying that her grandfather was friends, yeah. with, <laughs> made treaties, made treaties with aliens. <laughs> like, uh, is, she, is she still alive? She get her uh, in front of Congress. Testify. She is. She was featured on Ancient Aliens in 2009. Wow. Uh, the Eisenhower Library .gov website has an entire section called UFOs. They do? And flying saucers. Oh, man. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Check that out. Yeah. I mean, it's like <laughs> 1965 principal file series. Schultz denies that Eisenhower had contact with UFOs or extraterrestrial beings. Uh, claim that Eisenhower saw UFO spacecraft at Edwards Air Force Base. Hmm. I mean, this is like a multi-page long document wow. all about Eisenhower UFOs. Boy, this seems like uh, article material right here. It absolutely does. I mean, there's your Q4 pitch. Presidents <laughs> who have yeah. had contact with UFOs. <laughs> is, there, is there a keyword volume for that? Presidents and aliens? We'll see. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Man. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't have much to say about the men in black. I think it's a fun story, but I, I, I don't know how viable it is, especially like once we start talking about like more modern stuff, mm -hmm. you could argue that like if it was an organization, it disbanded at a certain point. But I'd imagine if this was like a thing that they were trying to do, try and keep things under wraps, 
it'd be very difficult to do in right. the modern age. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think that's why a lot of people have skepticism about claims today about things. Right. Unless the men in black are really good at their jobs. Unless they're really good at their jobs. In and which if they case, are... we only hear of the not good claims. Yeah. It's like the men in black, like it's their first day and they're like, it's dire consequences. And the guy's like, whatever. Yeah. And then he goes and it's talks like, to an uh, author. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Standing in stark contrast to recent events. Yes. It's been very interesting. Uh, we're recording now in... I guess this is going to come out in the next couple of weeks, but we're recording now in July, and there has been yeah, some news July. news yeah, lately yeah. about aliens. Yeah, at the time of recording, we're just a few days removed from the official UFO hearings led by David Grush in Congress. Mm -hmm. Interesting, though, because it's... I mean, I've even in the past few days alone, I've seen so many mainstream news outlets now reporting on ufo stuff that never would have before yeah new york times cnn um even like live science had a breakdown of like the five biggest takeaways from the ufo hearings oh yeah and like that's all like i mean i <laughs> all credible publications to not engage in a political discourse about what we consider credible publications mm -hmm. um but i mean historically right like the new york times uh, CNN, MSNBC, yes, all of these yeah, places that you think of as news outlets are mm -hmm. now talking about it because of these claims and because of who they're coming from. Because it's from the military, the most recent ones. Right. Added a lot of credence to the discussion and makes mm -hmm. it less of like a niche taboo thing to talk about. Right. Um, have you looked into this at all since we spoke about it the other day? Not too much. I've like seen it on like Reddit kind of okay, scrolling yeah. by, but I, I think you're a lot more informed about this. I am. Well, yeah. So when the initial news broke, when the first article from the debrief came out, I covered it on the website as well. Mm. So I was already kind of familiar with it as these hearings were starting. But David Grush is the guy at the center of this whole UFO resurgent conversation. Pittsburgh native represent. <laughs> <laughs> But just like to quickly outline his his credentials here, he's a decorated former combat officer who fought in Afghanistan. Um, he's a veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence a Agency and the National Reconnaissance Office. He served as a representative of the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force from 2019 until 2021. So his career spans more than 14 years as an hmm. intelligence officer in the U.S. military. It is interesting. I mean, he does have the background of someone who would be believed yeah. more than, let's say, a farmer in Kelly, Kentucky. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's not a, dr a potentially drunk farmer from Kelly, Kentucky. He's Exactly. Yeah. And like in people who have worked with him have said, like, he's really reliable. Like, he's the guy you go to for these things. Um, people haven't. Since he started talking about it, no one else in the military has come out and been like, oh, that guy's a hack. He's full mm. of it. Like, I'm at least not that I've seen. I've not seen a lot of people who have worked with him or who um, are also in prominent positions coming out and saying disparaging remarks about David Grush. Right. I think everyone's sort of in agreement um, that he's like he's a very reliable, trustworthy guy. I think he also... I watched his interview with News Nation. I think he also has a degree in physics because hmm. he has been talking about quantum physics and the he's he's not using the word extraterrestrial because he posited the idea that conceptually it is possible that some of these alleged craft recovered by the military may not be extraterrestrial in a sense, but maybe extra dimensional. Oh, what does that mean? Um, meaning that like in the way that we exist in three dimensions and race may exist in the fourth dimension, which we consider to be time. But hmm. to them, time would then be a physical plane, not just like a, a theoretical one, like what we experience it as. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's a very prominent 
concept in quantum physics, but it is very complicated and I'm not the person to like explain it mm -hmm. <laughs> in great detail. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> I got a degree in film writing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you can write the movie about this. I'm not Christopher Nolan. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I don't think I mentioned to you, I do really want to write a movie about the 1904 Olympic marathon. Oh yeah? I think it'd be really funny to do as like a best in show style comedy. It, it would, there's a lot of really good stuff there. Yeah. yeah. Side note, but yeah, that's been on my <laughs> mind a lot lately and I thought it'd be really fun. Yeah. Of all the of all the people to come forward in basically the past hundred years regarding UFO stuff. I think David Grush is the one that pretty much everybody can agree on mm -hmm. is the most trustworthy. I did uh, skim an op-ed about him earlier today that I think was on NBC, which basically said like, okay, he said this stuff, like show us the money. Where's the evidence? If I've heard a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, we have a friend who, yeah. We, we've thing, heard this like, stuff before. I mean, not before. This is the most we've heard from a very seemingly legitimate source. All right. Right. My, my thing with that is he could go full Edward Snowden and just release this information publicly, mm -hmm. but that would put a target on his back. He would likely be, criminally charged if he didn't flee the United States. I mean, there would be major, major, major repercussions for leaking that sensitive information publicly. Yeah. Um, he is go going through official channels in every mm -hmm. element of the way he's doing this. He presented his findings initially to Congress and said, I'm going to go public with this. The two authors who wrote the debrief article were the two who originally Back in 2017, wrote the New York Times article talking about the Navy UFO footage that was coming out at the time. And then on the floor of Congress, he was obviously talking under oath for the public record. A big part of it is the fact that members of the government aren't aware of this program mm -hmm. and that he, as a member of the UAP task force, who should have been made aware of anything regarding UAPs, was not being informed about these things hmm. that he's claiming and so a lot of it like a lot of the debate now deals with one like what is not being shared what crucial information that might pose a national security risk is not being shared with the proper channels funding is another large issue at mm -hmm. play here that people are trying to solve so it's not i mean the to the larger public it is very much about are, are aliens real are you saying that we have aliens bodies in cryo stasis like, yeah i mean all things we want to know but even from a official governmental standpoint he's not doing this to say the people need to know i mean he is doing that he is saying he said there's a sophisticated disinformation campaign targeting the u.s populace regarding ufos hmm. um Men so it in is black it kind i well i think more alluding to like those like what we had mentioned before about the cold war and hmm. the idea that government agencies facilitated and encouraged the publishing of kind of like bogus ufo stories in order to distract from very real experimentation they were doing mm -hmm. but in turn that has made the concept of ufos and uaps less believable over time because we look at it as like a quack conspiracy theory right and so yeah. i think that's what he's getting at with the disinformation campaign of like anyone who believes in this stuff must be crazy mm -hmm. is the, like a, a very wide consensus still amongst people. Sure. But I, yeah. yeah. Um, but also, yeah, like even just on a more governmental level, it's like, Hey, don't you guys want to know what all this military spending is going towards? Mm -hmm. And like, isn't that important for the people running our country to be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it brings up the question of like how many people know the things that he says he knows and, I mean, it depends on the number, I suppose, but let's say it's like a thousand people. Right. That's a lot of people. Like, uh, how is it that no one has that just taken until now? I don't know. This is interesting. Like, right. and uh, he's, he's also said he's never seen any of these craft himself mm -hmm. or the alleged bodies that he claims the U.S. is in 
possession of, but that it's like people within the program that he trusts have told him this information. Hmm. And so when people are asking like for the receipts, it's like, well, he doesn't actually have the receipts. Yeah. But he's saying someone does. Well, and then we need to be in- investigating this further. He needs to, if, I mean, then the next step, I guess, would be to name names, right? If, right. if, if well, it is going to be investigated further. So in the, the hearing the other day, in the hearing the other day, he did, um, he was asked if he could present names and he said he would not do it in a public setting. But after the hearing, he would deliver a list of names of like specific people. It is interesting too, because they do often, they have hearings, I believe that are, if they, if it's like a, a national security thing, they'll, they, they won't be public. They'll be in like a, you know, right. A skiff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. and this, I guess, didn't, wasn't considered that. No, they did a public hearing. They did a hearing specifically to get things on the public record. And they reiterated that multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like the, representative from california uh i forget his first name last name garcia was asking questions and he would consistently be like i know you already said this in your news nation interview but we need this on the public record here Hmm. because news nation i believe that interview is based not in the united states i see okay or at least the interviewer is british of some sort so but regardless doesn't technically qualify for the public record so that was what the actual public hearing was about and then there were multiple questions they asked about like how long has this been going on? What is ex- exactly is it that we've recovered? Who can we talk to to find out more information that he said, I'd be more than happy to, to give you this information in a skiff after the fact. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's very, yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Um, yeah. As for what he's actually claiming, I mean, he said we have for decades been collecting craft of non-human origin, um, that biologics have been recovered at the sites, hmm. meaning... Uh, pilots bodies who are also non-human intelligence he said that the pentagon defense contractors and other nations have recovered these things that we couldn't possibly be making based on the vehicle morphologies and material science testing he said that they've re-engine or reverse engineered a lot of this technology and that in the process humans have been injured um, Hmm. either by working with that technology or directly by non-human intelligence Wow. So he he made claims that not all of them are friendly. Yeah. If that's the case. Hmm. Oh, the intrigue deepens. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very interesting hmm. updates. It'll be interesting, too, once this comes out, if there will be, have been more news from him or others. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm, I mean, yeah, this is one of the things I'm keeping, like, a very, very, very close eye yeah. on in the news. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's interesting, I, yeah. Yeah, especially like I was talking to a friend about this and he started, he's much more skeptical as well. And he was yelling at me just like, well, if he has the information, then he needs to show the receipts. Come on, man. Put it. And I'm like, but but he can't because of it's got to be handled this certain way. Like, so I've had yeah. to, um, as a result of not, in, I don't like a direct confrontation or debate. So I made sure I knew as much about this as I possibly could mm-hmm. before I like, tried to talk to people about it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing where like, yeah, people are going to be either a believer or not, and they're going to defend their position. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, when we were talking about it in Slack and you were like, and they found like bodies and stuff, I was like, Oh, yeah. weird. Like that's so it's strange. Cr- I mean, if that stuff's true, that's, insane yeah it is insane and it's like change the world but it's too yeah. early right now i'm also convinced that even if like they held a press conference where they dragged an alien body out people would still call it a hoax well i think people really need visuals so i think having a visual versus someone's testimony would like make a big difference especially if Absolutely, it was like yeah. if it was like biden <laughs> saying it you know <laughs> yeah. someone like high up in government yeah, but I even think of like a lot of videos and stuff that have come out recently of like there was like a video I saw of somebody like filming out of their airplane window. This like thing that clearly looks kind of like a UFO came up mm-hmm. and I don't know something about I, obviously it's like I was said earlier, it's easy to fake that stuff on a computer, but there are usually some pretty clear indicators when things like that are being faked as well. And yeah, I think people are are. At least most people are rightfully skeptical of things they see on the right. internet, videos, whatever. 
I mean, I guess they're skeptical of the government too. So maybe that would make a difference. But I think if there was like a visual or, or something and the government was like, we believe in this, da, 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 da. It just yeah. needs to turn around for that to happen. So, yeah, it would, I mean, it would be a, yeah, like fundamentally change the way that we think about kind of everything. Yeah, for sure. Which is scary, but also kind of cool. The truth is out there. Yeah. To end on like a little bit of a lighter note, I did find a couple kind of fun, interesting, uh, recent UFO sightings. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, to, to, to start off, uh, at, with all of these hearings and stuff going on, Tim Burchett, a GOP representative, said he saw classified footage um, regarding UAPs that has not been released to the public. He said, we, quote, can't handle it and warned that it could warned that what the technology that he saw could, quote, turn us into a charcoal briquette. Wow. That's a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paints a picture. Yeah, um, there's been yeah several Navy pilots um, even testified alongside David Grush um, reporting their stories. One of them long retired now talked about seeing stuff and then one of them more recently involved in military endeavors. Obviously, there's a lot of I mentioned it uh, at this point. This episode will be coming out. I mentioned it last month during History Happy Hour that I've been reading Avi Loeb's book That's on right, extraterrestrials. Yeah. But yeah, he's another Harvard professor who has claimed multiple times that a meteorite that crash landed and is now on the ocean floor may be UFO crash debris. Mm -hmm. But as for recent sightings, I have one from April 30th, 2023. Mm. Police Very in Las recent. Vegas received a call from a distressed family who claimed they were looking at tall, skinny alien creatures with greenish color skin that stood eight to ten feet tall. And we're hiding behind a forklift in their backyard. Wow. Uh, the guy called 911 at 1225 a.m. on May 1st, told the dispatcher that there were two strange figures in his backyard and that they were, quote, not human. 100% hmm. they're not human. I swear to God, it's not a joke. It's actually real. Okay. <laughs> were these things, like, checked out by the police? The police did stop by. They didn't really find anything. Um, hmm. A couple days later, they released body cam footage of an officer talking to some people and in the background you can see like a very bright green light fall out of the sky oh creepy um so it happened around the same time as this phone call there's not really been anything since then to corroborate this story but i just thought it was kind of a fun one the idea that i i listened to the call and it, it has that tone of like somebody freaking out and trying to maintain composure to not oh. sound crazy. Yeah. Like he's like shaking a little bit, a little bit. And he's like, I'm, I'm aware that this sounds crazy, but I like there's an eight foot tall person staring at me with big eyes and it's not a human. It's an alien. Like I, I know I sound like a psychopath, but like, mm. so it's very, well, yeah, I wonder, I want to know more about this person's life story, but it's interesting. Me too. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't know how much credibility it has or anything. I just thought it was a fun, fun little yeah. story to end on, fun story to share, to say this stuff is still still out there, still out there, it's still happening. Like, and that's what's really interesting is for something that began in the 50s as like, as Carl Jung said, kind of this modern folklore for it to still be going on mm -hmm. 80 years later. Right. I think it. I've been seeing a map going around the internet lately that maybe you've seen too about where alien sightings have been. Yeah, and it's almost all the United States and like England. It's English speaking. Yeah, I know of a few in Japan as well. There's like there's little dots elsewhere, yeah. but the vast majority are like the United States, which I thought. I mean, I don't know. I should you know clarify. I saw this map on the internet so i don't know right <laughs> right but it the suggestion is like this mostly happens the united or an american phenomenon and uh most of the stories you talked about were that's yeah american stories zimbabwe aside yeah which i also thought was interesting to think about i'm also curious like how much of that is just the way america is mm -hmm. um because i know uh, just from being into this stuff i know there are definitely stories of ufos being seen I know Australia is like weirdly big for it. I'm um, still an English speaking country, obviously. Yeah. Um, I know of a few in Japan, Russia. You don't really hear of it a lot in South America. 
No. Well, it comes it comes back into this idea of if, if this is like a modern day folklore, maybe I don't know. There's something right. there about an English speaking world. War yeah. Fear kind and of. And then also, yeah. you know, the, it could if we're talking about reasonable explanations, military tests, the US being a military power in the Cold War and everything, what right. were they doing? I just thought the map was interesting and again, I don't know, I don't I can't like verify it, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty common joke online too. like, oh, UFOs only ever land in America. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's all definitely very interesting. That's why I wanted to talk about the aerial school one, too, because it's such an outlier in so mm-hmm. many different ways. Yeah, definitely. It, out of everything we've talked about, do you think that one is the most credible? I, uh, now that we've talked about it. Over the course of like four hours, (laughs) I would say probably the Lake Michigan one of the ones we've talked about today. I think I would agree with you. I think Kelly Hopkins Hill is very weird, but there is enough there that it could be nothing. And then Lake Michigan is like, there are just so many people and so spread out. And the the guy, the radar meteorologist, his reaction is a compelling piece of evidence, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like witness testimony is like famously not the most reliable thing but i think like being able to hear somebody's somebody who's not an actor in the moment's reaction Mm -hmm. kind of tells you a lot at least just about how bizarre of a situation it is right yeah their fear and shock and everything for sure right right i did look up most credible ufo (laughs) sightings and just out of curiosity a lot of these are really recent according this is from history History.com. Mm-hmm. The Lights Above New Jersey Turnpike from 2001, which is that really famous video um, taken from somebody's like camera on the side of the road of this thing flying around. The hmm. USS Nimitz encounter of 2004, a couple white spear or white spheres flying around in the air above a like aircraft carrier hmm. 100 miles off the coast of San Diego. The O'Hare International Airport saucer. Flight 446 from North Carolina to Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Um, an employee on the tarmac noticed a dark gray metallic craft hovering over gate C-17. A total of 12 United employees and a few witnesses outside the airport said they saw the saucer around 4.15 p.m. Hmm. The Stephenville sightings, 2008 in Texas, about 100 miles southwest of Dallas, uh, another farmland sort of thing, but citizens reported seeing white lights above Highway 67, first in a single horizontal arc and then in vertical parallel lines. I think the interesting thing is how similar a lot of these sightings are, which I mean, it could mean that they're people are seeing the same thing. I just don't know if that means it's aliens or something else. Yeah. Well, then the last one on this list was the East Coast Go Fast video from 2015, which was part of the 2017 leak uh, or release of videos for the advanced aviation threat identification program. Um, This was 25,000 feet above the Atlantic Ocean as pilots tracked an object fly away and simultaneously rotate on its axis. And Hmm. no explanation has come out since then in the past eight years for what that possibly could be. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not I'm open to things. I think we lack the evidence right now. But yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's definitely something going on, whether. Yeah, there's something going alien on. Alien or I mean, like th- we have footage and claims from people who should know about the capabilities of modern air travel mm-hmm. saying we don't have anything that can be propelled this way. They can turn on its axis that way. They can move at this speed. So, yeah, either someone has it. <laughs> that's, that's all we know. Right. And that's not impossible. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I feel like the rest of this year could either like there could be like more stuff or all this stuff could kind of like fizzle out and nothing's really going to happen. But we'll yeah. see. Depends what happens with Hunter Biden's laptop, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's like the two <laughs> news stories I've seen. It's been like UFOs are real and Hunter Biden's laptop. And I'm like, one of these I care about. Maybe he has proof of aliens <laughs> on his laptop. That would be the only way to get me to care about that story. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just like, cool. Uh, Yeah. Wow. Well, I think I think we're reaching the end of our 
end of our road here. We are. Have I changed your mind at all? Are you less of a skeptic than you were when we started? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think the recent stuff is I'm I I'm like interested in it. I'll say that. I'll take that. I'll take okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Perfect. once you start looking into the presidents in the yeah. aliens thing, that'll if like Eisenhower says it. Then like, who am I to argue with Eisenhower? Right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, keep your eyes on all that's interesting dot com. You might be seeing more <laughs> news about UFOs or possibly an upcoming story about yeah. presidents and aliens. <laughs> if our yeah. editor approves it. That'd be amazing. Yeah. If not, I mean, we have a bunch of other stuff on there that is more verifiably accurate mm -hmm. about history and science <laughs> and true crime sure and lots of stuff about cryptids too if you're if that's your thing things yeah, that are do, uh, inexplicable yeah. cover a lot of the stuff on the paranormal there as well usually try to keep it in a realm that is um grounded yeah i mean it's interesting how people people say things and they seem to believe what they've seen and sometimes they think they've seen demons or ghosts and yeah sometimes yeah. sometimes you write about those things big feet and Oh, yeah. Loch Ness's. Other ones. Loch yeah. Ness monsters. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you want to keep up to date, you can join our newsletter. It's allinteresting.com slash sign up. Or you can become a member at allinteresting.com slash membership. Yeah. Or, if yeah, reach out to the podcast directly at podcast at allinteresting.com via email. You can give us a phone call at 929-526-3029 if you have any notes comments concerns stories to share yeah whatever it may be i'd be interested if anyone if anyone listened to our last series and this series what they thought i think this series was so different from our last series in so many ways very different from the titanic series very different like maybe more fun i don't know i definitely had yeah. more fun with this one <laughs> Yeah, yeah me too. Such a pain <laughs> to plan it. <laughs> it was a lot of information. Um, it was like I learned a lot about the Titanic, yeah, but it, it was, was a lot. It was, yeah, of work. I thought it was very interesting. It was just a lot of yeah, like you said, a lot of information, and we were covering an event that itself only lasted about two hours, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of like obvious overlap between things you were writing about for an episode and things I was writing about. Yeah. And like making sure we weren't being repetitive, but also, yeah, it was, it was a very, it was a lot of it coordination was a involved. Web. Yeah. Yes. And this was just kind of like, let's talk about aliens. Da -da -da. Which I'm that was always fun. down for. Yeah, it was cool. Good, good aliens, talk. Aliens, ghosts, conspiracy theories, always fun to debate. I don't think our next series has been decided upon, has it? I don't think so. So if anyone has any suggestions <laughs> for... Yeah. For things. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's think. This is coming out throughout August. Correct. Halloween's not far off. So maybe something spooky. Can do spooky. It's one of our specialties. Love talking about spooky stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, obviously we'll keep listeners updated as we figure things out on our end. But for now, thanks for listening. Until next time. Until next time.